you already kind of had a little glimmer, glimpse at all of this, and I know that you guys have jumped in. Um, I invited the entire staff. You are the only building in the district that has the entire staff now included in SMORE, but because of you, we have now added 150 accounts throughout the district. So I have every building is trying it out. Um, Cronin is a close second to Hofer. They've got a lot of people trying it out there. Um, so it's growing. And as we continue to show the use and we grow it, obviously then the district can look at a district-wide purchase where everybody would have the ability to do this. I'd like to suggest something for you that I didn't think was going to support you and save your time. And I mean, it's a beautiful platform that actually really, and if you take things with your picture of an anchor chart with your phone, it's just, a lot of times you'll see me out here working, like what is she doing on her phone? Because this doesn't work in my office. So I have to come out here to do it. So if you're seeing me do that, based on fun center working on my phone, I'm working on my small newsletter. Because it's just easier to take a picture and upload it from my from my phone. Okay. So we're gonna use this little acronym as we go through this. SMORE stands for simple, manageable, organized, repeated, and engaging. Um, I think they need to market that because I made that up and it works. So I <laughs> <laughs> need to in my hand and uh, go there for them. So we're going to go ahead and get started. If you haven't already joined, you should have gotten an email to join the SMORE um, platform. If you can't find it, um, if you just let me know at some point by the time we're done here today, I will make sure that you're added in there. But you should be in there. I saw a lot of people that hadn't accepted yet. You can search your email for s'more and you'll, you should see the invite email that comes through. So one of the first things that Mrs. Folks mentioned and we found it very helpful is that it's simple. Um, you can search in something called the Educator Hive. It's near the top. I'll show you when I log in in just a second. And they have pre-made templates. So for example, we were, Nicole and I were talking a lot last year and we typed in math. You got a million <laughs> math newsletters that someone else had made that you can use as inspiration. You can steal what they use, you can change it up and make it your own. Um, so if you're kind of lost at ideas, it's okay to look for those templates and to use those other ideas that are out there. Work smarter, not harder. Um, the nice piece about SMART is that you can embed those photos. You can also embed links to things as well as videos. So I know last year we did some of the read aloud. We were able to find the book on someone reading out loud and we embedded it in SMART so then families could share that at home as well. And then as always, and this is like my mantra this week, but think about technology and how it can work for you, not you working to fit the mold of the technology. So SMORE really needs to be your tool that you're able to kind of make work for what you need it for. It doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to be weekly. Uh, I don't remember who it was, but someone last year called me and they were like, I just can't keep up. And I'm like, what are you trying to do? We're trying to do one every week. Okay, well don't. Like, it's okay. There's no rules, right? You can do one once a month. Some sort of information going home to parents is better than none. So you just Take a try. Do what works for you, right? Don't make the technology force you into something that you're not ready So, S'more, this little guy, um, is like their little you know, mascot. And there's help throughout the system and the platform that will help you get into the S'more dashboard. Right now, over 70% of schools in, this, in the nation use S'more as a communication tool to go home. Um, and when I saw that, I was like, well, yeah, I recognize it all the time. Um, and you'll see it now, too. Once you get into it and you start learning it, when your kids' um, newsletters come home, you'll, you'll notice it. Oh, my dentist uses Smart. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's a Smart platform. <laughs> so you'll start to recognize it uh, as very popular. All right, it is quick to create. It's manageable. So you can duplicate, you drag and drop, you can click through the features. Um, Jen Madden is a pro at finding different things. I remember last year I couldn't change the layout and she's like, come here, I'll show you. Oh, look, oh, that's so cool. So you're not gonna break it, you know, have fun with it. 
Um, you can link to your Google Drive, so you can upload things straight from your Google Drive, maybe that you shared in Google Classroom. Um, you can do that as well. Uh, and you can copy and paste, which is a very manageable tool. Just some little thoughts, tips and tricks about organization with this more platform. Um, just five simple things to keep in mind when you're creating this, okay? So first of all, think about how parents are gonna receive the information. Most of our families are extremely busy. And so when they get that s'more, they're looking at it on their phone. So plan, how should it look when they're gonna scan it on their phone? Wordiness is not gonna get you the best bang for your buck. And you know that, your lives are busy. You're scanning through all those words, right? You're looking for the big headlines, you're looking for the big picture pieces. A majority of them aren't gonna read every word, even though you want them to. So just keep that in mind as you're creating. Introduce, give your detail, but then repeat the message. Mrs. Copes in hers, she will repeat certain parts of the newsletter every time she makes a new one. So she just duplicates her newsletter, and then maybe like the upcoming events, stays put. It doesn't change or she adds new, but it's something consistent for families. Um, I think I've seen some where teachers do like a word of the month and they have that as a consistent platform. Parents are used to that. They know where to look for that. Um, a lot of people will put at the bottom their health information, like contact information. They'll put it at the bottom and they just leave it there. They don't move it. So it's a very nice, like, consistent platform that as parents, they're not gonna have to relearn something every time you go through. Again, be clear, um, use your links. If you're advertising for a fundraiser or a field trip, can you link the field trip form on there? Um, you know, can you link websites that help parents learn more information if they're interested? Using those links is just a real fast, clear way to keep people connected. Um, again, build it for that mobile idea. Parents are going to sit on it probably like, you know, at dinner or maybe not at dinner, maybe going to bed. They're going to be scanning that on their phone. So there is a feature that allows you to view what it looks like on a mobile device. Use it. Look at it. If it's too wordy, if you click on it and the whole first screen is words on your phone, you probably need to chop off some of those words because nobody's going to read it. They're just going to scan right past. Um, and then, again, use real life examples. I think sometimes, you know, parents just need to be brought along on the journey, and the real life pieces within us more can help us get there. So last year when we were talking about SEL in our classrooms and we were doing the words and the books of the month, we linked those right there, it was real life. We didn't just say this book existed, we gave them the copy of their listen so they could listen to it or read it at home with their, their child. Sharing it. So, like she said, when I publish it, then I go out and she can see it. What happens if 